listeners, welcome back to HTO. Hope you're all well. I'm, as ever, joined by my co-host, Andrew Timbrell, and it's as ever, me, Tom Whitford. We're deep into our film series, looking at the best, weird and wonderful sports documentaries of all time. We've got another cracker lined up tonight, haven't we, Andrew? Yeah, we sure have, yeah. Still hosting and still in lockdown. Um, we're joined by the notorious Gavin Fitzgerald. See what I did there, Gavin? <laughs> well, that's your value. Yeah, it's a, it's a first for me. <laughs> <laughs> How are things? Yeah, good, good. Um, sort of uh, as we're saying, just just trying to continuing making films. A little little difficult from lockdown, but um, kind of getting used to it, and maybe in a, in a, in a bad way. <laughs> uh, I've been using like remote crews around the world to shoot stuff for me when I can't go there. So, um, but all good. Yeah. We've all found different ways to, to to live, haven't we? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously, your piece on Conor McGregor, we've got you in for to just delve in deeply, really, into that creation, uh, Gavin. First off the bat, I suppose, is how does an opportunity like that arise? Yeah, I mean, um, Conor was one of those really lucky ones where I sort of backed the right horse. Because I met him before he kind of, uh, before he got the UFC and before he got famous. So I think the first time I'm, we, we were doing small documentaries on some of the SBG guys. Um, and we, we kind of noticed Connor at the corner of her eye. He was a skinhead back then. Um, sort of like, almost like seemed a bit aggressive. And I was like, I think we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave this guy for a bit. Um, and then he went to Iceland and he came back and he was just real stoic. <laughs> it was like this transformation he grew a beard as well and um that was before he fought uh what was his name ivan something other um in um cage 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 warriors and we did an interview with him before the fight and he, it was just like he was just talking different to a lot of the fighters and he was uh just had this incredible self-belief which just sort of was infectious and um you know, immediately said, oh, I'd love to, you know, film me backstage and whatever. And of course, Connor, we found out pretty soon, loves the attention. So, um, and back then, like really, there wasn't, people didn't care about MMA or um, they didn't know about it in Ireland, really. So we were very much one of the first, you know, camera crew interested in it. So we filmed him. Um, uh, so we had some early footage. We had the kind of foot in the door early. And we went to RTE, which is our national broadcaster, with um, the idea of doing a one-hour doc as he was getting into the UFC. And it just led from that to doing a six-part series on him. And after doing that, we you know, decided that we're going to make a movie. Um, and that's how, that's how that whole kind of journey went. You say that. Have you, therefore, followed and tracked hundreds of different MMA UFC fighters and just one got lucky? <laughs> Um, I mean, we, it was more so the SPG guys, we went up there, there was this, I mean, I guess we just picked the right gym then, because there was just yeah. so many, they were the best gym, and we knew that, my, my, my friend who we started this with, he, he runs an MMA, an MMA website, so he knew that the, that was where, where to go to look for characters, I was just looking to, you know, make documentaries, it was kind of the first documentaries I was making. Um, Paddy Houlihan was one guy up there. We we made a doc on him, uh, um, and just just small things. And uh, Owen Roddy, his, his sparring coach, and then Connor was next. And then it was just like we were thinking about doing one of the whole team up there. And then it was just like, no, actually, let's just let's just do it on Connor. He's <laughs> he's enough going on with the with this crazy character here. Um, and of course, like I I thought, you know, I mean, he 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 kind of as I said, it's infectious. So you believe him when he tells you he's going to do this and that. But, you know, you have to pinch yourself a little and say, like, you know, I don't, is he really that good? We didn't know. Um, but he just kept proving himself and, and I just kind of spiraled into this, uh, uh, the, the train he's, he's kind of been on ever since. He's very much the flag bearer for the sort of see it, believe it, make it happen type of approach, isn't it? With his visualizations that he goes, he t- talks about openly you you touched on earlier gavin the whole fact of this sort of meteoric rise of connor that how the, the changes over those that four-year period that you were filming yet throughout there was this constant attitude and belief in connor that, that even when he was struggling to make ends meet um what's what's it like filming 
uh, a character and an individual that up close instead of something that's a little bit more kind of broad scale social cultural changes in a sport for example um yeah like I, I guess every everybody's different i mean connor um you know there was a point where where, where you're suddenly filming him like talking in in the shower <laughs> you know he's 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 just he's just like butt naked there they're talking to you he's like and you're just at the camera you know he literally would pull off his jocks in front of you and start taking a shower so like there was no there was no like you know there was no problem with access it was just it was just totally <laughs> open. It was also like we're this kind of tool for him as well it was weird and uh, you know like that like people you know there's a certain type of people who like having a camera crew around i mean the very first time we were filming him you know in the early days we were filming him um he wanted to get a better deal on his first car he was going to buy so he immediately calls us to, to come film it you know it's, it's it's that kind of thing where he wants this <laughs> this, this this kind of camera crew on him and the funny thing about that story was he said like we, we, we were doing this doc for rte but like you, you don't you don't when you work for rte you don't like they don't send you like an rte outfit saying oh i'm an rte person but he wanted us to bring our rte gear <laughs> i was like i don't have any he's like i just sort it out so I went to my wife's um, um, house. Her, her dad, who's passed away, used to work for RTE. And I, I, I found like a bunch of really old, like out of date logo RTE stuff. And we, we, we put that on as a costume almost to make it look. But the logo was like totally out of date. It was from the 80s. So <laughs> <laughs> just like you just end up in constant silly situations when you're when you're when you're amongst uh, celebrities. But Connor more so than, than anyone, for sure. Was, was there a feeling then like and well, I guess the question is twofold. A, was there a moment that you realised, you know what, this guy is the real deal. He's going to the very top of his sport. Uh, and with that, bringing a whole new swathe of fans that we can talk about shortly. Um, but then it, was there also a feeling that there was kind of mutually mutually a good deal this? You know, he was getting that publicity. He was getting a film made about him or initially a documentary. And you were suddenly, you said it's one of your first projects or certainly one of your first major ones, um, you know, to get off the ground. Was there like a mutual moment where you're like, this, this is, this is going to be good. This is, this is a good story now. Like, yeah, I think definitely at the beginning it was like that, and then, and then it kind of, <laughs> kind of grew further apart <laughs> because you know, then like you, you meet these. Um, one thing about like making a documentary on on a celebrity, you're going to find it when they see he got famous as we were filming. So there was a point where like you know suddenly there's now three crews trying to film him for one day. And, and, and there's that competitive nature with other documentary makers is like, oh they're getting our shit and whatever you know it, it, it just it gets uh, it gets complicated um and you know th then then suddenly the access almost gets reduced a little and you have to kind of fight for it um so mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's it, it was this weird thing i think you know he has a definitely had a sense of loyalty um to me you know having been you know uh, with him from the start or whatever um but you also you're growing yourself as a person as well and sure. you want to respect you know you as well and then and then it's just it's like you had the more access at the beginning than you did at the end which i think is it can be strange but it's all a learning curve um you know just as a filmmaker and then as a sports person i get it i mean it, it gets intense like you know you're, you're you just have all these people who want something from you suddenly it changes you don't have that direct path to him suddenly you, you know there's there's, there's a million people who want, and you can't process that all. So it's it's tough, yeah. I think that's probably a challenge, isn't it, for a film director, particularly of a sports individual, where it's it's about, you know, let's face it, you know, Connor is such a vibrant character, but this guy wants to win at all costs, you know, and, and, and it must it must be quite... Were there, were there days where you started filming thinking, oh, like, is he in the right mood today? Oh, I've been told to, to, to F off more than once <laughs> filming. Um, I don't take it personally, you know, he'd apologize sometimes for, uh, you know, that, 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 that's just, that's part of the game. I mean, if you, if you, like if I were to, I, I mean, I, in future, like if I'm approaching projects, I mean, I'd probably like to do it on an athlete that his story has been told already because mm. <laughs> it's, it's almost like, like there's so much weeks work go into telling one story and then I don't know, Connor drives the car into a, something or other and you have to change the story again or you know it's it's just it's just like that when it, when, a, when a person is like actively doing something i think um asif kapadia who, who did maradona spoke about the same thing mm -hmm. just this like constant uh kind of downfall and rebirth and 
it, it was getting to that towards the end of uh, our, our, my journey with him and um, it was getting kind of ridiculous um so yeah um we were, we were talking andrew and i were reflecting on that uh, this yeah. week you know in preparation for this discussion and actually saying that must be one of the hardest things because as much as you know it's difficult to do to retro and fit something you know if the event happened 10 15 years ago because you've got to find that footage you've got to it, the story's been told and the narrative there is set and you can make the piece kind of that you want to make um you know so i wanted to ask you that like you know when you started out i, I guess when you started out you didn't know where it was going to end up but but you know how hard did you find it to continuously continue adapt and is the end product kind of kind of how you envisage it at the beginning or is it so far removed from what you kind of had at play yeah i mean with 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 uh with the film definitely i mean the yeah it, it all just kind of got blended into this one journey almost with the film included with the series we did and everything um you know we didn't have time to step back and and and, and start you know writing we, i mean there was pl plenty of writing of of the structure of the story but by the next week it was out of date and, and you kind of start to figure this out um yeah i mean definitely like the it was it was the goal was to tell the story of him becoming world champion but then you know, when he lost a fight against um, Diaz, it just completely changed um, our story. Something totally unexpected. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about going to that fight because it was just, it just seemed like such a tag on. It seemed like at the time, it was just going to be such a walkover fight. And, um, you know, what's the point in him winning the belt and then beating random, but, you know, obviously Diaz is, is an amazing character, but it just didn't really fit into the story we were telling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I went. Yeah, so when you're, like, I, I think, like lesson learning if you are telling an observational doc like you, you just you just never stop until the film is out like and you way too much footage is it's it's hard and um, it's not like a process i recommend but it worked for this one um ultimately and it had to be the way because we had to we had to show up to training like you know like he did if, he, mm -hmm. if there's a point where that was it was like that some days, some some weeks would be different. And he doesn't want you to get there, but other weeks, you know, we had to show that like we're here to work, and and that's and that's a, that's a weird dynamic, but I get it as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it does make it all the more evocative, though, as the viewer, because any retrofit documentary, like I said, all that that narrative has been told, and it's it is quite clear when you're talking to the protagonists in that story, you know, they're recalling events that have happened, you know, and I think to to see the you know, those ups and downs. You, you look at something else, obviously, one of the biggest sports communities in the last couple of years, The Last Dance, very similar in terms of a lot of that footage being shot during that final season, during that final run, you know, with lots of unknown endings, whether that be to franchise management, whether that to be to Michael Jordan himself. And and actually, you see that. So, But what you really see as well, then, is the strength and character of your leading protagonist, because actually they are unwavering will to win and which so uh, i just wanted to say like as much as that probably made it difficult to film it makes it awesome to watch as well um so so we appreciate it as the viewers uh, thanks i think like th there was definitely pressure from um you know the likes of funders to, to do interviews and to sit down and but uh, but I, i'd seen him like um i'd seen him do interview after interview with uh, all these various crews who come in and he just goes into this interview mode which i felt isn't the real him and i, I we, we just had this liberty you know, and, and I was I was young and and and, and broke and silly, and it was just like let's just let's just roll with this, let's just let's just keep going, let's stay on the journey, and maintain access at all costs, and, and that and that was that was the the ultimate goal, and then be editing at the same time because you can't uh, you can't uh, you have to be ready to finish a film and release it before he does something else crazy. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm assuming the, the the title Gavin was sort of chose itself, did it? Uh, it, I, I was always looking for like a you know um, another title, but it's it, it's choosing films uh, or titles for fight uh, for fighting documentaries is actually really hard because they've all been used. Think of the amount of fight promotions, the amount of um, mm. events that are held around the world. They they thought of every pun in the dictionary. They thought yeah. of there just there just wasn't anything. I was just like look notorious. So mm. uh, yeah, I, I mean just basically. Uh, it was it was it was kind of like the the working title that became the title <laughs> yeah yeah it means it dropped in what sort of come out to what four years ago now gavin yeah 2017 and yeah. uh i actually haven't really um seen them since so it's 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 been a while you know it was just a case of like you know what are we doing next you come in here to wherever he's going russia or something i'm just like <laughs> 
no, I think I'm, I'm good. I'm going to move on with, with other films. Um, it, it just, just because I, you know, I don't just do follow Connor for, for, for my whole life. Um, it, it, you just know, do that on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 I've learned a lot. Um, I really enjoyed the experience and I had to, I just as a filmmaker to go on and make stuff cause it's very hard. Um, uh, he's a very, very last minute person. And um, you can get crazy calls to go to LA, Russia, you know, the day before the flight. And it, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, how long is this going to go on for? And then you get sucked into making another movie, another series. So it was such a long road to make that, that I, I just had to kind of yeah. step aside and, 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 and end it there. What were your inspirations for, for the filmmaking in terms of like, uh, not necessarily just with Notorious, like when you got into the industry yourself, you know, what did you take from other sports documentaries? What led you to sort of saying, do you know what, this is what I want to do. And then by extension, you know, potentially something like Notorious or other projects that you're on at the moment. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think it really fell into it, to be honest. Um, even the documentary side, because I was more making uh, music videos and stuff like that and uh writing scripts and just doing all sorts of things but um i yeah i think um just i think it just how real uh mma was and fighting it, it just really opened my eyes to the potential for storytelling there and you know since then i've, I've gone on i, I do jiu-jitsu myself um i have another short film coming out about a jiu-jitsu fighter um i just got hooked <laughs> you know i think i think um and then and then yeah i think probably um I think Netflix just, just I, I know it's I know it's not like that new, but but Netflix has just really brought up the production value of, of documentaries and stuff like you're saying, The Last Dance, um and uh Senna, you know, just just films that um it's it's real drama, you know, it's 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 you know it's it's in its purest form, but it's but it's real. And um I think I think I think I think uh, they also like it doesn't matter what sport it is you know it can captivate an audience like my my wife was hooked to the last dance maybe just because she fancied all the all the basketball players but there's something like universal about it about a fantastic sports story so it's something I I, I would do again and again to be honest because I love watching those type of films and I'm, I'm a big sports fan yeah it's just interesting you say about the MMA because it's not let's face it it's not been a particularly universal sport it's since I mean it's it's definitely leveraged off the success of someone like Connor, right? I mean, since the since your documentary dropped, he's definitely moved into sort of transcending the sport, hasn't he, um, Gavin? What were your thoughts about his kind of, um, shall we say, dipping into the boxing game? Um, yeah, like I mean, I think that, that was the thing about Connor was he, he always had this thing which which transcended fighting. Um, it was, and um, you know, it started off as this as this charm and charisma, and it, it, it kind of went into this brand. I think that was the point where I, where I left and there was, it, it, it kind of got silly and that's probably when the boxing came in. I think, I think that was probably the height. And I, I don't know, you see, the thing is, um, uh, I think he's still pretty popular in, in the UK and in America for sure. And in, in Ireland, he has lost a lot of popularity. Um, and um, I, I would, I would think that was just, he's trying to get it back, but you know, I think, the boxing had a lot to do with that. He he got a hundred million plus for that fight. He was, you know, I think the ego just went a little after that one. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think uh, it's a little bit sad because I think that he, you know, he had the power to be an insanely positive influence because when he grew his hair long, half of Ireland had their hair long. When he grew a beard, they grew a beard. Now he has a skinhead and I don't see many skinheads around in, in Dublin. I don't know. So it, it's like... Do you yeah, think that, it. do you, I, and you know, and in Houston, I, and I won't put you on the spot and for the definitive answer, but do you think that changed in Connor from those early days when you were filming him for, or was the brand that ultimate goal? Or was becoming world champion, becoming the best in what he does, the ultimate goal? Because the, Andrew again and I, we were reflecting that often you look at other sports stars who transcend their sport and, and, and become bigger than their sport almost. You know, my favorite sports person of all time is Tiger Woods. You could argue that the same thing. But then they often go hand in hand with frankly being the best by a long way in your sport as well. You know, being the outright best with Tiger Woods, Muhammad Ali. And Connor, as, as fantastic as he is, you know, lots of people would argue he's not the greatest MMA fighter or greatest UFC fighter. Um, was Brand always number one goal? Did he just want to go out and become box office or was that something that you think developed during your time could you see that change when when the opportunity arose 
Uh, I think he was. I think he was aware. I think. He, I think. Was, I remember there was this amazing quote he said. Um, and I'm not even sure if my camera was rolling at the time, <laughs> but he just said, you know, back in this is back 2013. He said, you know, you're not truly famous until you come out to a mixture of booze and cheers. Uh, uh, that, that was very apt because you know you don't get to be the best without without a, without a divide and probably now more more so than ever in this world with social media and everything um i think he realized that and um yeah there was a point where he stopped caring about what people th thought of him or whatever and 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 just and just kind of played the brand a bit too much i think um but no i think ultimately no his goal was definitely always to be UFC champion, but then you, you get you get your two belts. You know, you you get the biggest boxing fight of all time. You probably, yeah, you probably, you know, you need to fight for something more. And if you have it all, you know, it's it's um, it gets tough, right? This is this is the typical journey of a fighter as well. You know, this is Rocky three we're in there, or Rocky four. I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, yeah, I know. I you know that's someone's remind me that football management and fighting you know you, you're, you're getting sacked or you're going out on your back like it's, it's a very few um, industries where you know the end the end is nigh and the end isn't a good end most of the time you know very <laughs> so actually you've got to make hay in a way don't you and you know, i think you know they see the opportunity and you, you can, i wouldn't blame anyone for at all for, for grabbing such limelight but um mm -hmm. it's a short career and uh, let's be honest a pretty brutal one <laughs> so you know you just got to keep your got to keep your goals elsewhere other than becoming world champion yeah, I mean, he makes more money outside of fighting. He doesn't have to fight at the moment. I think I yeah. think that's purely for um, to get some of the fans back and some momentum, and probably just for something to do. I mean, he's probably feeling the lockdown a bit with this Dustin Poirier fight. But like, you know, I'd love him. Like, everyone would love to see him go in a role and really try to. He could still be known as one of the best. He's still in his prime. Um, Absolutely. But I just I just get the sense that he'll win this one. I, I would say to fight again. He should win it, and then. Um, he'll go off the radar for another year, you know, because he doesn't have to. Whereas before, like, we couldn't keep up with the man he was fighting. It was, it was, <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. He was, mm -hmm. he would have, he would have fought more if Dana allowed him to take last minute um, fights, but they never allowed him to because they wanted to, to build him up um, or to market the event. They didn't want it to, to put him in as yeah. a substitute fighter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And someone like Conor McGregor, I'm thinking of Floyd Mayweather, who shared the ring with as well. These characters that definitely divide opinion. And it's, um, I don't know, I think there's something there's something about that whole sort of fighting once a year, fighting once every two years. They've, they've, they've got themselves into a position, Conor and Floyd, where they can they can afford to do that they don't have to fight and i think there's something quite admirable about that but i think because of the but i think because of the nature of the sports they're very you know gladiatorial warriors like fans want them to be like fighting every two weeks don't they and i think it's just it's a, for, a, for a, from a fan's perspective i think sometimes that's just hard to accept um that floyd like for the last 5 years of his career roughly was fighting every sort of 13 14 months probably on average maybe even more longer than that um but there's there's something quite admirable I think about that Gavin don't you think yeah I think like I mean it's damage prevention I mean that's probably why he's you know he chooses some of the fights he does mm. um I think like you know there's a lot of there's a lot of talk around it and, and, and jumping up like weight divisions and stuff like that is actually a massive risk yeah. for, for a head injury and um I think he recognizes Connor recognizes that Floyd, Floyd does too the funny story about Floyd I remember after that fight um he uh he sort of uh, you know, it was, it was this theater the whole way through. Of, but I, I always got got the sense that like they both understood it was business, and um, it was uh, Floyd just came over to us all, like the camera crew, um, the team, and everything, and just kind of shook our hands, and then just kind of walked away. And he was just framed under this like um, this this uh, silhouetted light, and just kind of turns around, and just goes, "It's just business," <laughs> and just like walks yeah. off. I was like, ah, oh, fair play to him. That was, that was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Amazing. And, and you're absolutely right. I've never known an, say, I've never known an event where an outcome was so widely known. People knew how that was going to go. Everyone knew how that was going to go. I knew how that was going to go. I still wanted to watch it. And I think that, you know, no, you're, you're, you convinced me eventually. I was like, you know what? I think you might win. <laughs> really? No, it's, it's, it, I think, you know, the standard team, I was like, so you've got, yeah. maybe not at the time but basically one of the best boxing fighters ever and certainly over the last 20 30 years 
in a boxing fight against a person who's not by core a pure boxer. I was like, well, it's only going to go one way. But and and you know, you had the wrestling sort of weigh-ins and press conference, the wrestling style, um, you know, and yet you just you you magnetic characters, and I think ultimately that's what sport. Um, is about isn't it it's about you know titans it's about whether that be a team sport an individual sport you you're watching not only for the purity you know otherwise you'd go and watch a puncher you know that's not fun to watch what you're watching is the occasion and the event um and i think that you know know, notorious really captures that you did mention a couple of other projects you're on at the moment but um what next for you in terms of like a challenge um other than trying to create documentaries during the global pandemic which i'm sure presume is creating enough challenge for you but is that you know you said there was a definitive point after the notorious or even during your relationship with conaway you goes, do you know what i want to move on to something else i want to move on to new things what's the sort of on the bucket list for gavin as gerald in terms of uh, filmmaking yeah well um, i'm actually i've got a film in production at the moment so i'm kind of full steam ahead with that one uh it's about pigeon racing so it's about like uh million dollar pigeon racing so like the, the, the kind of high stakes yeah yeah pigeon racing that's happening all around the world so i've got characters from china to south africa to america um to to, to europe and uh we we are following their stories and and uh, this kind of great sense of competition and the passion behind and uh, the sport so it's, it's an unusual kind of quirky one but it's it's mad mad worlds i seem to have just i don't know just uh, like a, a draw towards really strange worlds um so uh, i was gonna i was gonna say as, as lockdown pre- like sort of preempted those sorts of strange random thoughts or <laughs> uh no well, yeah the film actually started just before lockdown and we, we've had you know so we had some footage um before all this crack which is probably good you know delay the project a good bit um but we've had to kind of you know find a way to adapt and like if you can't make it to thailand recently i had a week block of shooting in thailand and I was on a monitor, you know, watching them and stuff. And it's like from, from right from here. So it was, it, it's, it's strange. But um, yeah, I think like uh, I probably, uh, there might be some, like, some, uh, some sports stories I have my eye on, um, but it probably won't get sucked into like a celebrity world again uh, because I found like I did a film on, on Liam Gallagher as well. And uh, a lot of uh, just their world kind of mirrored each other in, in a kind of, in probably not a good way. Uh, although Liam is Liam is a great guy and um, fair play to him, he's hilarious. Um, but it's just it's just um, there's just this team around them, you know, and and, and it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to get through to the person a lot of the time. And yeah, um, yeah so I think like if I were to approach a sports story, it'd be something like you know uh, the Last Dance style or or someone maybe maybe not as famous but, but it's just it's something you can get through kind of mm. access to and and, and 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 real discussions with um yeah, yeah no that would appeal and i think i i imagine especially hard and you, you mentioned the team in this day of social media and sort of instant access for for anyone really because you know if you've got a camera phone you you can be that person who's going to say access to them you know it does take that sort of intimacy away whereas you know 20 30 years ago before the advent of such technology actually even if there were five or six of you in the room with that individual only five or six of you are hearing that at that one moment yes yeah, someone may be recording it and it may be released or printed the next day in a paper or, you know but it's it's still any more an intimate experience and i think that really comes across in the last dance um, we've mentioned that a couple of times but so we we're not going to put you on the spot to name that one um we always say this for all our film um producing directors what's your favorite sort of documentary out there for for listeners to give a watch to other than your own material you know, you can't plug your own stuff. Um, you, you can say it as well, but if is there another one that you just love? Uh, like not sports though. Any, any, any sport or other? You know, either or. Yeah, yeah. Um, God, why, 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 why never? I have so many. Like, I just want to say so many films, and like, and then just they just all escape me. Right. Uh, but one second. Um, uh, let me think. Oh my god! I'm just completely. It's like it's like it's like I watch so many films now that I'm just like completely blank, and I can't think. Sports, of... sports could work as well. Our our edit our editing no, team you know, fantastic, good. Gavin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we can just edit it out. Gavin's been pondering this answer, listener, for two and a half hours, but I think he's <laughs> he's verging on an answer. So we're going to dip back in with him now. Well, just just with uh, on the sports team, I did I did think that the when I talked about kind of offbeat quirky stories. I thought that documentary series "Losers" on Netflix is is is, is very good, 
very well done and, and it just proves that like you can make a, a thrilling documentary about curling or or um you know uh, the the kind of bobsleigh racing or something like that you know anything just unusual is, is fantastic i think people are just captivated by 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 competition and mm. it doesn't matter what the sport is um but I'll always have a, have a fondness in my heart for for uh, martial arts because I've just I'm just a genuine fan now, um, so I feel like it's it's something I go back to um, again. Thanks for all your time, Gavin. That's been brilliant. Yeah, we breached our half. No problem at all. A pleasure. Oh, yeah, and very I wish you all the best of luck with continuing to make filmmaking remotely uh, via Zoom. Sorry to put you through more Zoom calls um, to, 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 to complete this chat this evening, but yeah, we really enjoyed it. We obviously both love Notorious. I just, I just um, had a thought about your pigeon racing uh, film, uh, Gavin. Have you, have you dropped uh, Mike Tyson an email? Um, I, actually, I actually met him in Vegas. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure he knew what I was talking about. He, he, he seemed a bit off his head or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Wrong with... time. Wrong time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, li listeners, we've got uh, we've got Mike Tyson joining us next week on the pod. So, <laughs> um, well, and talking about yeah, documentary making, wouldn't there, wouldn't there be some fascinating um, stuff there? And I'm sure many a story. I want someone to find a load of archive footage for him, like they did for the Last Dance. Um, you know, if he's got some live stuff for that, that would be pretty incredible. Um, but and as Andrew said, really appreciate you joining us this evening. Really enjoyed the chat. So, thank you very much. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for having me. Take no care. Guys. Take care. All right. See you later. So another film episode ticked off the list. It's good to get that one done, Tom. Yeah, no, really interesting. And like I know we obviously we delved into it with Gavin, but for me, you know, that difference between filming an individual versus watching, you know, watching that, you know, a team a team documentary because you know you, the whole success not not just of the story or the narrative, but like of individual filming sessions, individual days. Is almost based on one individual's um, emotions that day if they're feeling it if they're in a, in a mood if they're feeling fantastic and that must be so surreal as a filmmaker just to know that you know all your hard work if if this one individual is got a headache or just not feeling it or it, you know doesn't want to speak to media that day you go again the next day and every day must be like spinning plates a really interesting perspective there you know, understanding, you know, the entourage that follows such a superstar that Conor McGregor is. And, you know, Conor McGregor, is, you know, like we said, transcended that sport. I'm I'm personally not too invested in MMA and, and UFC. I've watched four or five Conor McGregor fights and that shows you everything, you know. You, you're attracted to superstars and we all are. And I think Gavin was right. The spirit of competition just reels you in. You can't sit there and watch a fight or sit there and watch a, a tennis match and then suddenly you just find yourself wanting a side to win and I think um you know uh, it captures it when you've got an individual as enigmatic as Conor McGregor yeah, I thought I thought that that came up in the chat earlier as well the whole thing of you know the Mayweather fight and people knew the outcome I mean I kind of sort of agreed a little bit with Gavin as in you know what I'm like I mean I, I can be sold I can be sold the sold talk down the river. So, if someone gives me the talk I'll stop to believe it like you know I, 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 I the whole famous uh Audley Harris and David Hay fight. I went into that. Oh, thing. Yeah, I remember like, that. There's no, remember there's that. no way Hay is going to be able to take Audley's shots, and he'd even throw a punch anyway. And then you've got like the Conor McGregor um, Floyd Mayweather one, where at the end of the yeah. day, but the, but then that that's why I was that's firmly why. of that opinion in that fight. I was like Conor, uh, I was like um, Floyd Mayweather finishes this whenever he wants to finish it because it's a boxing fight, and he's a boxer. But, but 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 there's a but I think there's a separate argument. I think what Kat Gavin was saying as well is that before that fight, you know. Conor McGregor does such a good job in selling that fight. Oh. Even even if you thought he didn't or he didn't have a chance or he, he he could land a shot, then you you just knew that people were going to pay that money to watch. Oh, that. completely! That's the magic they, of the match. And, and in a way, that's if someone makes you believe it doesn't matter what they do and what they stand for, then that's greatness in a way, isn't it? Completely. That's the greatness of the man. You know, and you're a boxing you're a boxing fan, Andrew, and and. If someone told you, if you didn't know the story of Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather, if someone told you that there's a five or six weight world champion, um, whichever Floyd is, one of the best boxers of his generation, one of the best boxers, best boxers of all time, is going to fight in a boxing match against someone who's never had a professional boxing match. Mm. You, If you didn't know that other situation, you'd tell me it's a silly, it's a joke, the boxer's going to win easily. And mm. like you said, yet you have this enigmatic character like Conor McGregor, and he sold the fight. And he suddenly had people believing, oh, do you know what? Do you know what? Mm. And that, that that's part of it. And obviously... Notorious isn't necessarily about that. It's about the rise of Connor. But 
you see that in him so early that mm. that unrelenting belief in who they are and what they are mm. i really found it fascinating his answer about you know was it all about winning or was the brand always the end goal and clearly there was a bit of both in there from connor from the beginning and that's really interesting for me that he knew what it took to win clearly because he's a fantastic yeah. phenomenal fighter but he also knew what it took to become a star yeah and the and the for, for me the most fascinating characteristic about conor mcgregor is and this can this comes up a lot in the in the in the documentary as well like it's the threads throughout is the whole visualizing reality you know he talks he talks endlessly throughout his whole career about seeing seeing him lift the belt seeing him lift that whatever it might be seeing him land that shot like he said that left hand against jose aldo like he saw that shot thousands of times in his sleep mm. like he knew he knew that shot was going to happen and and it, he just he built he, and, and also the, the thing is with connor is he's he's he knows how to sell he knows how to sell the 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 story to the to the audience as well he's not he's more than just an athlete you know and don't get me wrong don't get me wrong an incredibly dedicated athlete who trains and works hard but also he's very good at selling and that's why he's box office you know so it's um yeah. yeah fascinating character for our film series really enjoyed that um got lots more packed in for listeners coming up so yeah really enjoying the series yeah stay tuned guys take care thanks for listening <laughs>